Welcome everyone, welcome to a new devcast. Uh, very excited to be back after we dropped last week, not last week, two weeks ago's one. We are, we are just us, plus one now, which uh, I will come to in a second here. Um, yeah, I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, I know it's like, it's a little waiting time uh, for, for us here, but we're constantly trying to improve our stuff. And so we did with the devcast with this cool new layout we have here, where we all just sit together in a room, something um, we have actually not done yet, um, and talk about uh, our next update. And there's one more person on this couch now, so I I want you to all to welcome Terminal, our community manager, where, who will from now on actually moderate these uh, devcasts. So hey Terminal, welcome! Howdy howdy. What's up weirdos? <laughs> Great to finally we... be here. For for the completion, I think uh, you can do like a really short introduction, but most people should know you yet. For those who don't, um, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Terminal, community manager. Just a weirdo out here who's way too passionate about this game, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for today. I'm excited for what we're gonna show, and I hope you guys are just as excited as we are. I'm still kind of waking up though. Still just, just a little bit on the tired verge, but it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, you yes, are here. Mm. Yeah, that's yes, sir, definitely for your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to wake up a little bit early, get all the prep and whatnot, wake up, slap myself in the face. Yeah, we're going to be covering a lot today. We're going to be doing sounds. Uh, last time we had a dev cast, we only had the right leg for the footsteps. Thankfully, we've got the left leg. We got 100% of the footstep sounds done now, which we'll be showing off. We're showing you a little bit of sound pathing, some some rework shaders, shadows, a couple of performance discussions. Um, on top of that, even more, even more gunshot sounds and how they work and how it's going to look in the game. So, we, as well. yeah, yeah. So, hand it off to Oki. Oh, he did. Show us so, what we got. <clears throat> So the main points of the one of the main updates of this entire update is footsteps. The reason why uh, the footsteps are a big thing is uh, they define the direction of where the enemy is coming from. And the, so far, what we did is uh, before this update is we had directional footsteps all the time. However, when you hear hundred people running around you, it just even though they're all directional, it just becomes a chaotic. So very short, we had to find a way to filter out anything that is not threat to the player. Let's say there's a, I don't know, let's say 40 people around you, you hear all the footsteps and it's just chaotic. Instead of that, let's say 38 of those guys are not threat to you. Only two of them are actually possibly a threat to you are about to become a threat. So we only... Uh, make the that two guys with steps on the foreground and the rest 38 more on the background noise ish. So even though they're close to you, you kind of like hear the, the foreground as the those are the one that is a uh, possible threat to you. Um, this took out quite a while to get it right, but it turned out really great so far. And I'm about to show you guys. All right, <clears throat> share screen, screen. Share audio. There we go. Go live. Can you guys see this and hear this at yes. the same time? All right. Perfect. So the first thing is actually before I show that, I'm gonna show that the now individual each step, each landing, each vaulting, each jumping is actually uh, audible from the your perspective. So this is another player on the other side. So, and then in this client, in this uh, version, the audio is completely disabled, which means everything you're hearing is from this perspective, pretty much. So. You actually run upstairs now. So there's two layers of actually the footsteps. One is that um, the 
the footsteps, and the second one is the gears that are like the the backpack and the magazine weapon. Weapon. Yeah, like the the things like the things are on your um, like as a gear. So when you're behind obstacle, they don't sound that much. That gears actually kind of give that idea of what you call. Uh, a perspective of okay, this guy is actually very close to me, or possibly able to, you know, uh, shoot me or something. So, one second. There we go. Perfect. So, um, I'm gonna be showing you guys some another thing that is the pet, uh, things that we, we talk about the pet, uh, distance. Like, the, for example, I'm gonna be standing right there. Sorry for that. I'm gonna need to do that. Um, I'm gonna be standing right in the here, and at the behind, I'm actually next to this guy. Yeah, the sound is actually much more quieter here, despite actually I'm very close to the what's he called the guy. The thing is because the path that takes from here to the the listener is greater. So through this perspective. So it's coming through the opening. As that's the closest place yeah. to the so player, right? The volume gets larger when I the, the enemy runs towards the opening, not towards the, the wall actually. Okay, so the sound is actually going to the opening, not really through the wall, and that's how the sound pathing is working. The the sound is still coming from the, the player, it's not coming from the left. The thing is the more player gets closer to here, the the, the of door, it gets louder, telling the direction. I'm gonna demonstrate here for a second. So, moving here. One more time. Actually, the audio is in here 50% to make it easier to Even tell. Better. And here's another version of this one. Uh, don't mind the fuck, uh, normally we shouldn't have the night vision enabled and uh, screws up with the fog. Actually, let me restart really fast, meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah. gotta remember that we're in the dev build, you know? Always yeah, gotta yeah. remember that. Yeah, I press N instead of M all the time, and then that enables the night vision, and then the, normally we shouldn't supposed to have night vision enabled mm. in the day version of the maps because you know it's, it's day and then the the folk settings uh for the day version are not properly set so give me a second all good all good sounds good there we go Colts. very good. perfect so these are your footsteps that we're hearing right correct so i am next to this wall and then Okay, technically, we are very close to this guy. Like, right now, there's like a, only a wall between us. Yet, the, the, the sun has to travel long a path to actually reach to you. So you don't, you don't almost hear that at all. You only like... Ooh, it sounds muffled. And then, the moment I'm getting closer to the door, there's a door on my left. Nice. Now we actually do hear it. And the main reason why this is this actually steep is we want to because there's a lot of people around you all the time, and then we want to filter out anything that is not threat to you, and then just pretty much give it to the ones that is threat to you. So you can even there is like 40 people around you, you can only focus on three or four people that is possibly threat to you, uh, instead of having you know hearing that 30 footsteps all the time around you. So this is the filtering that we mentioned. Uh, it's no longer based on the distance between you and the camera, the player. It's based on the path. And actually, I can demonstrate here with the visualization here. Um, just a minute. <laughs> one. There we go. This is the one. 
Let's see what the fuck. There you go. Oh, don't mind that. One second, UI. No mind that it's a, this UI shouldn't supposed to be meant for autographic cameras, but. So oh, there's a like pathfinding pretty much. That is calculating pathfinding path for between you and the what's he call to the audio source at in this case the the guy, and um, this is done multi-threaded and it's updated based on um, how frequently it's used. So this doesn't have any CPU impact on any of you. It's very well optimized. Uh, only downsides is we're gonna be using about 150 megabyte more memory per map. Like if, if like on, when you launch the game, you're gonna it's gonna use a bit more memory, like 150 meg megabyte, because we have to hold like a voxel data for this uh, to get this working. Um, anyone who's interested, it's a star. So it's not gonna yeah. be a huge performance impact. It's just the memory. Uh, in CPU perspective, no, this is heavily optimized uh, to get this working. There you go. I always like seeing how this visually works. And we do actually like uh, ignore small obstacles on like major ones, so this way it doesn't like give false stuff. And this yeah. thing get like randomly loud and then muffled for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes. Oh, so okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Now the footsteps of the friendlies. This is all we talked about before. We wanted to make it that you don't actually mix them boats like the mm -hmm. friendlies are enemies. So, here's what we did for that. Um, yeah, because we had originally mentioned that we didn't want anybody to hear the friendly footsteps, but that was actually wrong. You'll actually be able to hear friendly footsteps, just not at the same distance, correct? So, yeah, pretty much what we had before is the friendly footsteps were quieter, and they had less radius of uh, audible distance. The, th the thing is, they had the exact same sounds, it's just quieter or something, and then it didn't really able to, was able to tell if it's friendly or enemy or if it was something anything at all. So just uh, confusing the player more. So as a solution, we changed the sounds of the uh, friendliness at all. They're actually clotting and gear at this point instead of actually footsteps. So they do have some feedback of sound. Yeah, you can clearly tell if it's a friendly or enemy at this point. This is the friendly ones. And this is the enemy ones. I mean with 254 players running around, that's that's a lot of feet. Yes, correct. And there's one more thing actually I want to show about the uh, uh, landing. So if you do land from high distance, like uh, like let's say from here. The sound actually changes. It sounds like actually it's gonna sound like someone falling from you know high, which actually yeah. it is. But yeah, we change the sound when uh, you land from high distance, making it very clear. Hey, someone just landed from all above from you, uh, making it clearly. You should just probably should turn back and start shooting the guy. And I remember the very first time you had shown me this, uh, you didn't even say what it was. And the very first thing out of my mouth was, it sounds like somebody fell and broke their leg. So <laughs> I mean, my indication was already that somebody had fallen from a height on it without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah, so the goal is if someone is like jumping, uh, sorry, someone is landing behind you, they make a lot of noise pretty much. So you should clearly at this point turn back and then shoot the guy well if if you don't then yeah it will be that pretty much so how high um do you um, have to be for that noise to actually happen because you can't do it just while jumping up and down no 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 it's oh, not this it's about okay i can't remember the exact value because it has been a while but it's a, um, it's a fair it's amount about though five to six meters ish so right yes, now, dude. Yeah, another level of a building and Alright. So essentially no, somebody jumped from a window. 
Yeah, pretty much. If you will, uh, depends on actually the window size. How high it is. Yep. Yep. Correct. Um, the next topic is gunshot sounds. Actually, we haven't, we have not demonstrated any of these things. Yeah, inside so, sounds, outside, and what they sound like to you. Yeah, definitely. So, for example, uh. So, before I actually did live the show that uh, we have two sounds for indoor and outdoor, plus we have LODs, which is we have different sounds for different distances. So, hmm, what I mean by that is, um, what do you call? Um, if the, play, the sound is between 0 to 100 meters, we play a different sound. If it's 100 to something, we play a different sound, making it more, um, what do you call? Clear that uh, this this uh, sound is coming from far from. So the the sound will be, by the way, uh, get what you call more and more um, wider. The more there's obstacles between you and the player. For example, hold up. Does it work the same as the footsteps? Is it the same sound padding, or is it completely no, different? We didn't we didn't use the same as the footsteps because if in footsteps. Uh, the footsteps does make sounds for players moving towards you, but it does it wasn't giving when we applied the same thing for the from footsteps to the gunshots, it didn't feel right. Like I want like the guys next to me, yet I'm hearing very quiet, that didn't feel too right. So we we use different approach for this, which is for example right now and moment Actually, let me get a LMG, uh, light, mach light machine gun, so I have more bullets on my end. Yeah, you the M249, uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, oh, the... Actually, let me show from this perspective, so it's easy to see. Pretty much, we lower the volume and then we muffle a little bit, uh, making that this gunfire is not something that is possibly yet uh, threat to you. However, the moment the gunfire gets closer to you, it gets higher volume and then the muffle goes away. Clearly telling, hey, if this someone, if this person's uh, firing, they're likely about to, you know, they can shoot you now. Uh, so pretty much, we try to apply that same filtering for the gunshot sounds. And actually, I want to show you guys now how long distance sh uh, shot sounds are sounding like. So let me spot that right now we're on Charlie, and I'm gonna spot on Alpha. And here it is out. Might be a little. Might be just a little bit hard to hear, but it's there. It's definitely there. The thing is, uh, there will be always uh, gunfire at distant. We want you to tell, hey, there's gunfire at distant. It's just what you call. You go there and then you you know join them. But the thing is, it should be background. It should not be interfering with what you are doing there. So, for example, also they do differ from indoor outdoor. For example, I'm outdoor right now. This is what you hear, and at the moment I'm in. Yeah, it's got a little more of a muffled sound to it. This is a pistol. Man, and with 254 players shooting, I mean, it's going to sound like a real battlefield now. It's actually going to sound alive. I mean, on top of this as well, we have a whole yeah. bunch of new ambient noises. Yeah, that's the next shit. The that birds. Really fast. <laughs> Even I enabled now. Uh, no. There we go. Actually, I want to show you guys while I'm moving from A to Charlie really fast and tell the like tell the difference how we sound. So right now we are like what uh, maybe 200 meters or something, 150 or 250, I believe. Yeah. And the more I get closer to it. It's gonna get a bit more louder and louder.
Oh man, really since I'm a bird guy, thing. sounds like a sounds like a couple robins, maybe a cardinal or two in there. That's it's about. That's exactly what it sounds hold like, up, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. No, the sounds actually do, does change a little bit. The, the sounds are not the same for that distant and this distant. They're yeah, much different. 150, than... 150 meters is where it started to change. 100, right now 120. And now we're getting closer, Ooh. closer. There you go. The sounds do change now. When you're indoor, we lower the volume a little bit more, telling that hey, you're the sounds coming from indoor. And there you go. Now we are getting really close. And I'm about to run out of ammo. And now you can definitely tell this is from the same room as you are. Because also what you call is like yeah, that reverb. And there you go. Actually I'm out of ammo right now. There you go. What pistol hmm. is that? Yep. Uh, this is MP443. And we also did some changes on the... So this is the demonstration of the gunshot sounds in terms of enemy... Uh, what's it call? Uh, Old New Friendly is, is pretty much very similar, it's just a bit more quieter. And they fade out really much faster. But we don't have different sounds for Friendly or enemy gunshot sounds. They're pretty much the same, just different volume levels and fade out uh, distances, pretty much. Uh, on the snipers, here's the difference actually. I could really show really fast. Um, let's say... Sorry. This is the new... Uh, the salvate of the snipers sounds really sound like. There's oh, one more man. thing, this is only for your own gun, your own sniper shots. Uh, you don't hear this impactful uh, on the other player's gun shots because that will just be noisy at that point. You want to move uh, You want to move your other character off the point? We Sorry, can hear the, yeah. Move your other character off the point because we can hear you capturing it. Ah, so that little ticking noise. Oh yeah. <laughs> This is a 6x, by the way. Um... Alright. Oh, that's funny. I thought that was one of us breathing into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, we actually do have... <laughs> so cool, man. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. <laughs> There's one more thing I actually want to mention about um, this about the some server issue that we had. Um, well, real real quick with the sniper yeah. rifles as well, they sound different from a distance too, right? Um, Have a little bit more of a so, louder uh, boom. We they're not that triple A quality. They do they do have different LOD sounds. Yes, if that's what you're asking, uh, I can actually demonstrate to you guys. And they do sound a bit more... Hold on. Yeah, they got a little more of a deep thud to them. But it's definitely not... Um, what do you call? Like, if the, if the game was, like, uh, more 10 versus 10, then I was, we would assume that there, there won't be too many snipers firing at the same time, so we would make it... Okay, if someone fires at distance, Make them more echoey, echoey, and like sound more, I guess, realistic. And what do you call? You hear the gunshots, the sniper guns fire like echoey, and on the, on the air going like yeah, all that stuff. Sounding. Yeah, but the thing is, um, you're talking about all the players, and you want to filter out anything that is not essential to you too much. Um, so this is giving you idea there's uh, someone there just firing, but it's definitely not going to be that echoey because we want to cut out fast, give you the idea, and make it only a background noise. It shouldn't be something that is taking your ear too much, distracting you too much. Now, did you uh, did you mess with the uh, sniper trails there? 
Uh, Sectors are faster? supposed to be. Yeah, they used to be uh, two seconds. Now they are one second. But however, this is only your perspective. So when you fire the sniper rifle from your perspective, they used to stand for two seconds. They now they stand for one second, making it fade out really fast. So because I know that the the community have mentioned that it is distracting them to. Uh, where they're aiming at, so yeah, we reduce the time only for from your perspective, but the same from the other perspective. All right. Um, so uh, about the servers, um, we had an issue about um, with the servers where if the server stands, server doesn't restart uh, more than twenty four hours. We had an issue where servers feels like they're laggy, like everyone's like moving. Laggy, um, the bullets are maybe they could like uh, solder a little bit, and the, all this time the solution we had was we were just restarting, and this is also very painful for community service as well. The community service had to restart their servers regularly, keep their keep the servers you know feeling great. And we find out that pretty much uh, the issue was that uh, we were using. Um, an integer, uh, sorry, the float, pretty much, uh, uh, float is pretty much a variable we use in uh, programming that is that can have decimals. Uh, anyway, we were using um, a variable <laughs> that can't, when it's too high, it cannot present decimals too well, pretty much. Uh, it gets when the game runs, lost. Pretty much when the game runs for a long time, uh, that value, the time, gets large value, and then it can present uh, time very precisely. And that was causing making the f servers pretty much feel like laggy, despite they are actually not lagging. And then we fix this by using more high precision um, uh, a variable, pretty much for 64, and that pretty much fixes. So from this point. The servers, the servers that are standing long enough, they won't have any stuttering issues or something, and they don't have to restart again and again. That's the idea, I, at least. It is Hopefully. fixed. No, it's hundred percent fixed. I tested on my end. I run a server and then I ran them for a couple of days, and yeah, it's definitely fixed. It was. There you have it. Bingo, bingo. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Something I want to add because this took a while to uh, fix it. All right. There's another point I actually want to discuss with you guys, uh, show you guys as well. So it's about shadows. Here's actually I want to show, demonstrate to you guys. So back in uh, what do you call 2019, 2020, we added the ability to the ability to enable disable shadows for low end uh, what do you call hardwares, GPUs. However, um, this option was heavily used out of its purpose, pretty much because. Disabling it, disabling it was giving a clear visibility advantage over any any player who has them enabled by default. So, um, what do you call? I want to show you guys how it looks without the without the um, the shadows. And this is yeah. how some people were able to play, right? Correct. Um, well, the initial idea was. Um, if 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 the if the person doesn't have a good GPU, they disable it so they have a bit more frames per second. However, um, gave them a little bit of an advantage, advantage kind of being okay. able to see a little there bit more go. like that. Yeah, but this is without shadows, and this is with the shadows. It clearly gives a very huge visual advan uh, advantage over. Anyone who's enabled and it's enabled by default, and because this is the way to get better visibility, this became the standard. Like whatever you do, uh, if you're not disabling this, you are in clear in disadvantage at this point. And then we don't want our graphics to our graphics standards to be looking like this, pretty much. Uh, so because of that. We disabled the ability to disable shadows. However, instead we added a slider where you can tune down shadows to very low, uh, very low to ultra based on whatever you want. However, we cannot disable them anymore. You can just tune them to low, very low resolution uh, shadows 
or higher resolution. However, it cannot give that a clear uh, disadvantage just disabling them. And this isn't a huge performance impact either, right? Or is it going to have... So, um, if your hardware is really old, like we're talking about 2010, maybe, um, in this case, it will have some effect, definitely, because the shadows are not that great for 2010s, 2009s, uh, and, like, they're, like, bandwidth issues, etc. Uh, but it, what I mean by bandwidth is, like, GPU bandwidth and stuff. Um, but, um, if, if, if your hardware is, like, above 2014, 15, you should, you wouldn't get affected by this, by this, because you're probably not even utilizing 100% of your GPU. The bandwidth is not GPU, uh, what do you call? Heavy. Heavy. It's not heavy at all. We, most of you are probably using at 20% of the GPU, while CPU is actually more intense. Uh, so this will add up on GPU, and if you were using 20, it will be not 24, 25, whatever. But if you were using 100% for GPU before, which is like 2010s, then it will have some effect on your uh, performance. However, again, we try to make it that that is for um, old hardwares, and it made a problem pretty much for anyone who's not disabling them. All right. <clears throat> so, so there's, there's one... other... There's one yeah. other thing that people have kind of noticed, and that seemed to be some glowing parts. Yes. On the enemy. Yes. What? What? What was? What was that? Yes. All about? I'm coming to that now. So, there is one more clear thing that is, um, we realize that we don't have enough vision indicators that separates friends and enemies, especially in a dog pass situation when there's like ten people there, and then you know you you won't tell which one's friendly or not. And then, that was making the cast more confusing. So, in the past, we tried to address this issue by, what do you call, um, with camouflages, pretty much. The camouflages are different. But the problem with the camouflages, if you make them too different, it gives a different advantage over different bushes. Like, if the, if the player is, like, close to the bush, some camouflages blend better than other uh, camouflages, making them you know, one side having advantage because their camouflage looks much better uh, or blends better in the foliage. If you make them close, then it's really hard to tell which, which one is which. And the thing is, you know, we have that floating uh, triangles on top, yet when people are in dog pile, that triangle doesn't really help. So previously we all had uh, glow sticks, but they weren't that noticeable. So we had to actually glow them to make it more visible. The glow sticks only do glow when you are really close, but other than it doesn't glow that much. So and these were these were always here. They just didn't they just didn't have yeah, that glow it effect just, it to just, them. It, yeah, exactly. It, there was a pile just standing right there, and then it wasn't that noticeable. So we make them just glow a little bit, that's it. And then by this way, it's just making it easier to tell if it's a friendly or not. And this is how the friendlies do look. Um, it seems to be just a quick little visual indication as well. Yeah, oh, and the, the thing is, the thing is, this glow effect is more visible on the friendlies. We, we intentionally didn't make them too visible on enemies, especially on distance, because we don't want this glow sticks to be making you, uh, what do you call? Like let's oh, say too noticeable. Are... Yeah, too noticeable. Um Yeah, it's just it's just that quick visual indication, you know, that to catch your eye really quick, essentially. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is actually more visible on definitely much more visible on the friendly. So you can't kinda tell like, hey, this is a friendly, this is a friendly, this is a friendly, this is not a friendly. Um Yeah. Alright. Um yeah. How will that how will that look? On a night map, just um, real quick. On night map, they would glow same as right now. They'll look about That's the only. same. Okay. Yeah, very much. Per look at same exactly. But um, they will definitely give away positions a bit more than the what do you call before because now they're actually glowing in the dark, making it a bit more easier to tell or not. Okay. Um. Then other thing also we added is um, 
there will be if the if an enemy is close to you in up to two, 20 meters so from zero to 20 meters and if there's zero obstacles between you and the enemy we are uh, we are enabling the icon on top of them that that is not visible through any obstacle or something uh to indicate this if it's enemy very clearly um so 20 meters is about this distance uh pretty much if there's no obstacles then yeah the, we're gonna be indicating that icon on top telling hey this is enemy <clears throat> all right uh yeah no go ahead go ahead yeah i was going to say the cleaning up uh, we also had some cleaning up on the ui the distances and the front icons the calling of them yeah, yeah so calling the when the friendly icons they have to be in your line of sight right they, if they're behind objects and whatnot, you're not going to be able to see their friendly indicators. Yeah, I was about to get that in a, bit, in a second. Um, so about that, we also had the point problem of what you call um, the. There's so much icons in the screen. It just when you load Battlebit right now, there's so many icons of friendlies and etc. And it's mostly distracting t to you guys. Um, I know that you guys have been requesting for a while uh, that how we can clean it up, and then and we found a better way to than before, which is uh, pretty much actually it's much simpler than before, and less actually it's much less CP intensive, which is uh, from this point, if the friendly is in 20 meters distance, we do show their icon regardless of um, what do you call obstacle or not. So, for example, right now, here's a frowny. And um, the moment it reaches 20 meters, it's only visible if there's no obstacle between you and the player. There is no obstacle in between you and the player. Correct. So, this way... Uh, by the way, this, the, the icons are still visible if the person is your team friend, if they're your party friend, if they're your clan friend, if they are your um, the or squad front, so but however a regular t or uh, regular teammates they won't be visible through uh, objects unless you really look into them or there's a clear up there's uh, what's it called there if if you look at them and there's no obstacle between you and the the player. So you're just gonna clean up the UI a lot uh, a lot of you know, tons of icons on the screen. So you can focus more on, okay, who's here, who's there, uh, which objects maybe I should look go, or, you know, cleaning up pretty much the screen space. Um, Making it yeah. less cluttered. Pretty much, that's the goal. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much all from I can show, at least visually and audible in from what we have done in four weeks there's a lot of other fixes has been done like uh, and then a lot of other uh, stuff has been what do you call like improved as visually gra uh, what do you call some graphical lighting issues has been fixed and stuff but i they're minor and that's not, not something i can visually show it's just codes optimizations there's actually some ep optimizations has been done uh, so actually, game gonna run probably either same or bit better actually, <laughs> in terms of CPU, which CPUs are our main bottleneck. Bottleneck. Yeah, that's all from me, guys. Well, perfect. Thank you for listening. There you have it. There you have it. Bunch of bunch of footstep changes, bunch of weapon changes, how it works, how it looks, a little bit of visual indicators. I think it looks really good. I'm really excited for it. And personally, I mean. The sounds, I just sit over here like a little kid in a okay. candy shop listening to the sounds. Really fast. Uh, don't mind this, I will, we will ch change this uh, UI button. They, this is the studio send us, but we don't like the military arm, we just haven't changed it yet. M4 best uh, gun. By the way, um, I don't know I ever I showed you guys, but many my scopes do really look great. I don't know if you guys still agree with me, but like this is the 4 4x, uh, the 3 4x version. I love, I just love the weapon sound. This is an ECOC. This is an ECOC. 
Ooh. And we actually had, uh, what's it called? We actually had uh, characteristics to the scubs. So, for example, this one, the right tickle doesn't move that much, as you can see. Um, pers personally, like as, a, as, a, as me, I don't like this that much. I like that when it's more moving, like uh, when it's like free look. Sorry, uh, free sway. Uh, so, for example, another, another one has this one. That is actually moving with my mouse. This is making it... Personally, I feel this is much more comfortable to me, but some of you may feel this is too much. And so now the the scopes actually have their characteristic uh, sways. Not just visual, but also they have their own sway models. Making them a bit more... Make sense to have actually different scopes now. So this is the... Um, so I forgot the name. Uh, yeah, I'm 125. And, um, yeah. All those nice scopes. Well, I think uh, yeah. I think Velasquez had a few things and Larry had a few things. We don't have too much more time. Let's do the slip. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to in a sec. Yeah, for, from my end, I, I don't know how you guys feel about the guy that made all these really nice scope models. I should He should definitely get a raise. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who made that. Yeah, I won that too. Um... Yeah, it looks oh, like uh. One more thing that? I forget to mention really fast. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't have any 1.5x. Uh... Oh, okay, there's like bug in the UI here. We didn't have any 1.5x. Strike fire is not enough 1.5. Uh, making it. Because I believe that we didn't have any of them, and then we only had one or uh, four, and it was like only uh, F2000 had one of them. So now we have actually some in between as well. Um, there you go. Yeah, anyway, alright. I'm gonna be leaving the stage to you guys. Thank you for listening. Perfect, thank you for, thank you for all that. Anyways, Larry. Yeah. You had some you had some beautiful work that you wanted to uh show off, something about some smooth edges. Yes. I did a lot of um smooth Can I say edging? No. No. Okay. No. But I did some, I like I did some smooth shading, shading <laughs> and stuff. Normal shading. I did okay. Um let me just open it up here really quick. So I prepared a file already. We will quickly... Is that actually the file now? Yeah, okay, we're in the file. Um, we'll quickly show it off. Uh, because uh, when we posted that update, people, a lot of people ask us about, okay, what is the difference? Like, what actual difference does it make? Um, the new smooth shade versions, and there's a few I just took as an example, um, are in general just more smooth now. Like, the general body shapes, grips, and so on, like, compared to the old ones, like what we have in the game right now, a lot of things are a lot more round now, a lot more crispy. Good example here is actually the orc with this interesting tail they have. There's like some chambers moving in there. This is what it looked like before and still looks like to this day. Same with the grip. The grip is now basically how it would be in its plastic molding. Um, pistols make a huge difference. M9 actually looks like an M9 now and I don't know what that was actually. Um, so yeah, and just going through the ranks here, Desert Eagle uh, doesn't have these interesting shapes in the front anymore. Everything's like now more in the actual body flow of the Desert Eagle. Um, MG36 is also a good example, especially with the drums, where they, they still have an indication that they are low poly, but overall they look a lot more round now. Um, same with all the body shapes, like this is flowing very nice into the body now, except of like compared to this where it stands out massively. Then um, Ultimax, which is a giant box, but like has some interesting new smooth shaded shapes with the stock. Some of you might notice that um, there's something new with the Ultimax. And that's because I also remade all the magazines in the meantime, and this will probably be the standard magazine for it now. Um, Very fast note Magri there, work. actually. Magri yes, work. we did actually do the uh, magazines uh, recoil uh, cost uh, 
uh, like kill requirements, all that stuff is also being reworked as well, by the way. So yeah. we do actually have a uh, more, much persistent because uh, what's it called in previous update, uh, per sorry, previous game, previous uh, version right now, that is live right now. Some of the heavy magazines are costing too much, some of them doesn't cost and they're not persistent, it doesn't make too much uh, sense. So we definitely be working this as well. All the all the uh, magazines, uh, what you call ma recoil value, their time, uh, their kill counts, requirements, etc. Yep. Yep. And um, now we can just continue the three examples. MP5. Now actually looking like an MP5, not this really, really uh, low poly style anymore. Um, and well, the bullets MP actually have uh, or well, the magazines actually. Show the bullets? Uh, not in this stage. That is on Oki. That is sadly out of my hands. Uh, and I yeah, to, I have to one by one place the bullets actually there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like for, loading a real magazine. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like for, at least for once for each weapon, but <laughs> I have to also optimize them very well, and then I haven't got into it so, and because it's not a big deal so far, we haven't had the time to work on it. Yeah, and um, just good example here also on the um. What is it called? The SV sixty eight, sixty nine. Yeah, SV sixty nine. Yeah. Um. Also, very very visible V change. And um, just to comment on one little thing here, uh, I got it asked a lot when we upload this. Was like, why do it? Focus on this. So I had to go through every single file to change the magazines and update more magazine options. And while I was in there anyway, I just did it. Because all Why new not? scopes are smooth shaded, it never took me like longer than thirty minutes, so I just I just did it while I was uh, at it anyway. Anyway, that that thing a solved. A lot of, a lot of reworks. Yes. Happening with this update: visual, audio, every, indications, every a lot of stuff weapon. coming. And speaking about weapons. Oh yeah, definitely more stuff. Um, yeah, I should have it here already. Is we did all this. Which is kind of cool, but there also is a new vector. At least a new model for Ooh. the vector. Ooh. Ooh. It wasn't a cool transition, wasn't it? Like, boom. Um, anyway. So, ah. yeah. We're still also in the process with the other people that work within the 3D uh, department in the meantime. We are uh, changing a few of the weapons uh, into new styles so they fit with the overall style of the game better. Especially because if we go back here... Um, the AKs and the Orcs and so on, they look way better than, for example, the SG-550, um, the M249 and so on. So we're also oh. slowly in the process of bringing every weapon on one level, at least from visually. So we don't have like one that is like visually way worse than all the other ones, that we have one common level where all our weapons are at. This is why we slowly go uh, through each and every one of them and also make them stand out a lot more. Also, this was, um, for the tech guys in here, this was also an upgrade because the in-game vector is the version 1 or generation 1, this is generation 2. But that's like a cool little side note. Kind of funny that we actually did that. It's taking the generation 4 probably. Yeah. Since Battle of the Remastered 1. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, the, f the funniest part to me about this little visual upgrade is this is how it always looked to me and now when this gets released and we start playing i'm gonna be like oh my gosh that's that's what everything looked like previously you know what i mean like i always imagined that this is what it looks like and now when we get something new and better it's like oh man i didn't i didn't realize it looks really good it looks really really good the moss rework win though the is actually on that list. so right now Ooh. right now we're working on yes well, like he's working on the sg550 Famas is next in queue. Um, some of you might have noticed that I have not streamed also in the last two weeks. Um, that is because I did this visual change to the unreleased weapons. And um, I don't know if I want to show that on stream while I work on them. Especially because nope. there's some in them that have not been part of any leaks. So, um... Oh. oh. Me, yeah, oh. The, so the thing is, some of the leaks are from my editor. 
Like you guys can generally see when I share a screen, you guys can see all the <laughs> weapons. Some of them are not in the editor as well, only on Larry's site. Yeah, there is an You're undisclosed of more. Yeah, there, there's an undisclosed amount of weapons that I actually have never shown to, or like ever never sh uh, shared with Oki for that exact reason. Until the point we implement them, they will stay on my site. That's, uh, files, you know, yeah. Yeah. that's probably for the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably is. But, yeah, because yeah, I do um... show a lot of editors on my screen. We totally yeah. didn't have a League of uh, a New Weapon last stream. Totally not, right? <laughs> Most, uh, like most of the time going back, rewatching, I'm like, uh-oh, there it is again. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, still working on that. Um, the rework, I might be done with it ne no, next week, probably not, the week after. So in two weeks, we'll probably stream again, and then we'll actually do weapon reworks, because then I will help, uh, yeah, Kane with, with his stuff. Okay. Other 2D modelers, by the way. We have mm -hmm. other 2D modelers in the team as well. That is there for a while, and they're working on the uh, the weapon skins, weapon reworks, you know. Definitely a lot. <clears throat> all right. All right, all right, all right. Coming. Then um, let me go back here. A lot of exciting things. Another exciting oh. thing, actually, we just did the uh, Velasquez, actually, just had a poll. And for some odd reason, Wackistan always gets talked about as being the worst map. People don't like to play it, yet you guys love it nonstop. Uh, and the most wild part to me is why and how everybody from everywhere voted to have Wackistan reworked. So that's definitely, that is coming in the update as well, right, Velasquez? It'll probably take you coming next update, for sure. That's a rework of Wackistan. Oh, is, is it the, in this update or in, not this one, but the next one? Uh, well, we will have a play cake version of map. We will run the same map, two maps in the same time. Uh, current and uh, new one. And after next update, we will replace maps. So we're talking about releasing the new version of the Wakistan. In the yeah, upcoming update. update, right? It's not in upcoming, upcoming plus one. In upcoming update, we will get a uh, gap test version. Like we will have, a, we will have a event where we will be able to get a new map, new Okay, so oh, let's ah, let's get okay. it very clear. It's the the map is not getting released on the new version, new update. It just we we upload it as a testing version, and it's going to be publicly live. On the next next update, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, because yeah, we have to work that very carefully. And that's to uh, that's just to test the map out, get some feedback, and then uh, go back to the drawing board to like perfect it, right? So yeah, pretty much. Uh, on the next uh, the upcoming update, the new Pakistan will be in the game. However, it won't be the it won't be the, Full the rotation. it won't replace the Pakistan yet. It will be something that we can just enable and then test it with you guys. And then after Vlasis gets his feedback about it, if it's great or if you have to improve further or if it's ready, then we're going to make it put to the actual rotation and replace it, replace the old Wakistan. I still just, I just cannot believe that everybody voted for Wakistan. I, I genuinely did not see that one coming. I thought it was going to be either Valley or River, but overwhelmingly... Across all platforms, everybody everybody wanted to see what you could do with Wakistan. So River Rivers, what do you call? Like it's really hard to see stuff in River for some reason. <laughs> I know. I uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Wakistan is... is the most uh, chose chose map, even though everybody dislikes it for some odd reason. All right, it's a fun um, map though. Yeah, so basically, uh, once we will, what you can will go live, we will make one more poll reach more maps to choose so yeah it will be much more composition in community to choose you know order of next map works yeah definitely be running more polls in the future we so. could do this for the um my next like actual development stream or model something like we could poll which weapon everyone wants to see me do first we could we could definitely we could. do we, we could do that. We could do that. So 
<laughs> All right. Well, I think that's I think that's everything we've been up to the past few weeks. Yeah. That we can yeah. show visually. Yeah. That, I have yeah. done so many stuff in program like program stuff, but uh Sally sharing screen the coast won't be that <laughs> I guess fun. <laughs> Still can definitely yeah. show a lot. Yeah. Real quick actually. Uh Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Kamikaze actually just dropped a new video about Battlebed. Uh, I kind of wanted to give him a shout out as he's 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 still a he's still a supporter. He's still making really really good informative videos. Uh, I I personally love watching his videos. He's very clear, concise on everything that he's doing, um, and he's very he's very excited about the update as well. So well, let me see mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 talks about yeah. a lot of the major changes. He has a lot of good, a lot of good perspectives. So definitely go over to uh, his YouTube, check him out. He streams on Twitch every so often. Um, super cool guy, super cool guy. Love him to death. So, like I said, watch his newest video. It's called Major Changes on Battlebit. Oh, little Long mention, uh, little well. little last thing from my end, which uh, mm -hmm. I I um I kind of wanted to bring up here, but um, uh, it's Otto's birthday today. Um. Uh. <laughs> could you guys just all go in vo uh, in the um, English chat and just wish him a happy birthday? Uh, he's a good uh, friend of mine. I I, I would really appreciate it. And uh, anyway, from my order. end, ha uh, happy birthday, Ola. So many. Well, as always, guys, thank you for joining us today. I think we're gonna go raid Darth Jiggles, right? Yeah, we're going to raid Jiggles. Yeah, we're starting gonna in, raid uh, five, Jiggles. Four, three, two, two, one. One. Don't forget community game night. Oh, and here we go with the Death Chasm. Yeah. Bye.